Yankees are hanging tough. With five guys in the lineup hitting 20-plus home runs, Oakland is still a threat for a spot in the October 2nd season. The Texas Rangers have never clinched at home. The Western Division leaders need wins in the race for best record, while Palmero campaigns for MVP honors. Down to the wire. Oakland needs a win on the road to stay alive. The Rangers and A's in a Western Division shootout next on FX Baseball Saturday night. And welcome to the ballpark in Arlington, an American League Western Division shootout. Two high-powered offenses, the upstart Oakland A's and the host Texas Rangers. Checking the standings in the American League in the West. Texas has a six-and-a-half game cushion on Oakland as they look for their third division championship in the last four years. Oakland still alive in the wild card, back of Boston by five. And welcome back to the ballpark. Matt Vaskersian, Ken Brett, the Texas Rangers, the Oakland A's. It's getting down to the wire in the West. Two teams that can score a lot of runs. And when you talk about the Texas Rangers, they're led by two guys having outstanding seasons. We're not talking about the big guy for the Texas Rangers. We're going to talk about him a little later. We're talking about Palmero and Yvonne Rodriguez. Rodriguez is having a great year. Palmero has played with a bad knee all season long, been mainly a DH. Rodriguez has scored 100 runs, has driven in 100 runs. 24 steals. He's done a great job offensively. All right, but we can't forget about the big guy. Juan Gonzalez has won two American League MVP awards in the last three years, and he had a monster night last night. He had slowed down considerably since the All-Star break, had only 10 home runs, but it looks like he's getting himself geared up right now for the playoffs. Three home runs last night. Looks like he's starting to get a little sniff here. So that's the Rangers. As far as the Oakland A's are concerned, they can bang it out there with anybody, and they're led by their young slugger, Jason Giambi. Jason's one of the three guys on the Oakland club that has 30 plus home runs and 100 RBIs but look at what he has done since the all-star break 370 and 68 RBIs Oakland is a team that can score a lot of runs this guy is their leader nobody expected the Oakland A's to be even this close to the postseason in late September a good one on tap a shootout in the American League West the upstart Oakland A's led by Jason Giambi hoping there's some hits left in that bat tonight Pudge Rodriguez and the host Rangers play by play coming up next Texas is brought to you by Rogaine Extra Strength for Men, because extra strength means extra hair. And by MasterCard. MasterCard, proud sponsor of Major League Baseball and fan of the great American pastime. The ballpark in Arlington, the second in a three-game weekend series between the two division leaders in the American League West. Let's check Art Howe's lineup card for the visiting Oakland A's tonight. Rich Becker in center field to lead it off. Randy Velarde, fifth in the American League and hits at the start of play bats in the two spot. Jason Giambi is batting third at first base. John Jaha struggled of late at DH. He bats in the four hole. Matt Stairs, another 100 RBI season for him in Oakland. He's in right field. Ben Grieve in left. Miguel Tejada, the shortstop. Eric Chavez, the third baseman, and veteran catcher Mike McFarland rounded out for the Oakland A's, who will take swings against 34-year-old right-hander John Burkett on the mound for the Texas Rangers tonight. Burkett's numbers this year is his ERA is 6.03, seven wins, eight losses, 24th start of the season tonight. And I might want to say right now that the wind is howling into right field. Left-handed hitters might have a field day in this ball game. Ball game. 176 hits and 134 innings. That number is way out of whack. 40 walks is pretty good. 87 strikeouts. For John Burkett to be successful in this ball game, he has got to get ahead. John Burkett was roughed up in his last outing against Tampa Bay six days ago. Went just two and a third his last time out there and took the loss in a 15 to double ray shellacking. See the numbers on Rich Becker at 272, a home run, eight runs batted in. Those are the American League numbers after coming over from Milwaukee in a post trading deadline deal. Ended up sending a player to be named later to the Brewers and ended up being minor league pitcher Carl Dale as the A's tried to shore up for a pennant drive. Two balls and two strikes on Rich Becker. Well, this is a good one tonight. On paper, you've got two of the highest powered offensive clubs in Major League Baseball, let alone the American League. Art Howe knows that his A's backs are to the collective wall. They very much need a win to stay alive in the postseason hunt tonight. And Rich Becker delivers with a leadoff single into the opposite field.
Well, defensively for the Rangers in the infield, first to third. Stevens, McLemore, Clayton, and Zeal left to right in the outfield. Greer, Goodwin, and Gonzalez. Seven-time Gold Glove Award winner Pudge Rodriguez back at home plate. 134 starts back there this year for Johnny Oates. That leads the league. He's in route to perhaps an eighth straight brawling Gold Glove Award at catcher. Here's Randy Velarde now with Becker aboard. Another late addition to the Oakland A's was Velarde. He came over prior to the trading deadline from the Anaheim Angels along with Omar Oliveris. Oakland has been very proactive since the All-Star break on to try and make themselves better. General Manager Billy Bean has been lighting up the phone line since about the middle of July on, and that's one of the reasons that the A's are still a factor here in late September. You know, one of the things that's great about Oakland, he made some deals and actually cut his payroll a little bit, and for a team that hasn't drawn real well, I bet your ownership's pretty happy with what he's done, and they've actually improved their club as a result of that. Well, Randy Velarde has been an outstanding addition since coming over from the Angels. 314 hitter overall. He's hit 329 in an Oakland uniform. Seven of his 16 home runs have come in two months as an A. 23 runs batted in for Oakland as well. Velarde grounds past the diving Royce Clayton in the left. And Oakland with two runners aboard has started against John Burkett tonight. John Burkett, we talked about him a little earlier. His ERA is 6.03. For him to be successful this year, he has got to get his pitches over. The basic pitches, fastball, curveball, slider, and change. Control is the key. And here's the key number right here against John Burkett. Opponents hitting 317. Of course, the lower that number is, the better you are. And to give you an idea of the lowest batting average this year in the American League versus a pitcher, 206. Pedro Martinez. Mm -hmm. The lower that number is, the better stuff and the better pitcher that particular guy is. Jason Giambi takes strike one from Burkett. Giambi at 317 to lead the club. He has put up career numbers in just about every offensive category. It's a guy who was drafted when the A's were last in the postseason in 1992. One ball and one strike on Jason Giambi. Jason Giambi with 229 runs driven in in 98 and 99. That is a total that will be increasing before it's all said and done. He has a chance to catch Jose Canseco and set a new franchise mark for RBI in consecutive years. You know, Rodriguez is the catcher. He's the catcher in the American League that wins the gold glove every year. Watch how he runs over and just backhands that ball. Tries to get in body, his body in front of him and just quick sticks his glove out. He's got great quick hands. And, of course, everybody knows about the fabulous arm. No one runs on him. He takes the other team's running game completely away. Had a couple of big cost stealings last night in the first game of this series. Three balls and a strike to Jason Giambi now, and you pointed it out a moment ago, Ken, with the wind blowing out to right field as it is, and we're not talking about just a little breeze. It is really blowing. Oakland's got John Jaha on deck, and then left-handed thumpers, stares, and grieve do up. Like to take advantage of that wind right out of the gate tonight. Burkett behind three and one. Full count now. Giambi thought it was a bit outside. Three and two. One thing you don't want to do if you're Berkeley, you do not want to find yourself in a bases loaded, nobody out situation from the get-go here. Dick Bosman, the pitching coach, does not want to see that either. You'd like to see a ground ball here. It's full to Giambi. Rodriguez sets up inside. Here's the payoff home. Swung out and missed. He got him. Big first inning punch out for John Burkett. Now, Burkett is not one of those guys that strikes out a lot of people, and I'm a little surprised that this one gets away from Giambi. He's got to be looking for a fastball, gets it, swings right through it. Take a look at the last pitch on pitch tracks. Definitely in the strike zone, little up, little away. One gone for John Jaha now, still runners at first and second. John Jaha having a magnificent season. Certainly a strong contender, if not a runaway winner for American League Comeback Player of the Year honors. Injury-filled 1997 and 1998 in Milwaukee. 
the guy who didn't have a job getting into spring training and the best thing that could have happened to John Jaha this spring was when he failed the Red Sox physical the A signed him and he has been one of the most productive hitters in the American League ever since. Well you would think he would be an outstanding hitter in Boston you know the kind of power he has and look at the numbers he's put on the board. 34 home runs 107 RBIs after hitting only 208 last year. And you look at the hot zone for, for for Jaha here. I mean, most most of these guys are going to like the ball down and in. He doesn't like it there. His hot zone a little spread out. Middle of the plate, 417. Middle outside, 344. One ball and one strike to Jaha. But John Jaha is that rare right-handed power hitter who gets most of his power to the opposite field. He'll take the ball to right field with the best of them. And it's two balls and a strike on him here. So again, that wind blown out to right will benefit Jaha, even though he swings a bat from the right side of the plate. We hear the crackling of thunder in the distance now here in Arlington. An ominous guy here over the ballpark tonight. Two balls and a strike from John Burkett to John Jaha. Picks up the outside corner. Those are the kind of pitches that Burkett has to make in the ball game. He doesn't want to have to make them consistently on a 2-1 count. He wants to get ahead and make those 1-2 pitches, not 2-1 pitches. Dick Bosman, great coach. Get ahead, stay ahead, use your head. That's his theory, and you think about it, it makes so much sense. Two men on, one away for Jaha, 2-2 two, two home from Burkett. Slider misses on the outside, and it's 3-2 and two now. Get, yeah. ahead, get ahead of the hitters. Stay ahead of the hitters. Use your pitch to get the hitters out. That's what he means when he says use your head. The key, of course, getting ahead and staying ahead. Third straight full count at bat for John Burkett. Jaha's run at full. One gun, base runners stay put. A swing and a miss strike three. Two big strikeouts for John Burkett with runners on. You notice the 3 2 pitch to Giambi throws in the fastball. Now it's a 3 2 pitch. He's got a little more room. He's going to get a little more of a, uh, take a little more of a gamble right here. He throws the curveball. It's not a strike, but it's a big breaking pitch. And you get a side view of the curveball, how it goes down and ends up, of course, out of the strike zone, but he chases it. 69 miles per hour. Pitch tracks provided by Questech.com. So it'll be up to Matt Stairs now. 38 home runs, seventh highest American League total. Stairs has homered in each of his last three ball games, including the big Ranger blowout here last night in Arlington. Velarde, the runner at first base, Becker at second. Good speed out there for Oakland. A's trying to jump on top early tonight. Lead-off singles against John Burkett, but the Ranger right-hander responded with strikeouts of two good power hitters. He got Giambi and Jaha swinging. And now it's one ball and one strike on Matt Stairs. We made reference to a little earlier the fact that this Oakland A offense can bang it out with any lineup in Major League Baseball. Matt Stairs with 38 home runs. John Jaha with 34. Jason Giambi with 32. Ben Grieve with 25. This Oakland team may well become the sixth team in history with four 30 home run guys. They are led by Matt Stairs. And I think the number four guy you're talking about obviously would have to be Ben Grieve. He's got about eight games left to hit five home runs, a tall task. But if somebody gets hot, they can certainly do it. It is Ben Grieve on deck, the Arlington native. Three balls and a strike on Matt Stairs. Full count now, three and two. John Burkett has faced Oakland twice this season. One win, one loss. Most recently, he was on the short end of a 4-2 Oakland victory in early July. Fans making noise behind their right-hander. 
Matt Stairs trying not to spoil runners at first and second with nobody out. The payoff home. Fouled back, and Stairs has another shot at it. Anytime you can throw a fastball to strike one left-handed hitter out three and two, and then the next hitter you throw him a curveball three and two, puts a little something in the next hitter's mind. What's he going to throw me? Because he's watching the same situation that we're watching. And of course, anytime as a pitcher you can make that hitter up there think a little bit, you're ahead of the game. A little bit of rain starts to fall over the ballpark. Here's the next 3 2 offering home to Matt Stairs, and the big fender misses outside. That's going to load the bases for Ben Grieve. Well, John Berkey went back to that curveball on a 3 and 2 pitch to Matt Stairs and just missed. He has thrown 27 pitches already. He's got two outs in the top of the first. But of course, this is the month of September. The Rangers have a ton of people in the bullpen to go to. Not really a concern right now from their point of view. Here is Ben Grieve. Grounded through the hole on the right side. It's going to score at least one. Becker comes home. It gets past Gonzalez in right. Velarde scores. They're going to wave stairs all the way around from first. Clean base hit into right field by Ben Grieve. He's got 81 RBIs now. And then I don't know what's going on in right field with the right fielder. This ball's just bouncing along the ground. And he takes his eye off it. The ball goes right by him. It gives another run to Oakland. And a single turns into a two-base error for a triple. So two RBIs and, of course, the big error by Gonzalez in right field. And all of a sudden, it's 3 nothing. And the inning kept alive for Miguel Tejada now. A huge miscue by Texas. Now Juan Gonzalez had the monster night last night with three home runs against Oakland. Gives one of them back here this afternoon. Tejada offers it the first pitch. Stevens does it himself, but the A's jump on the board with three quick runs in the top of the first. P. Juan Gonzalez adds into the damage in a three-run Oakland top of the first. The A's jump on top for three runs in support of Kevin Apier. This is the way Johnny Oates aligns his Rangers here tonight. Switch hitting second baseman Mark McLemore top the card. Von Rodriguez a catcher. Rodriguez at 3.34, a career high. Rusty Greer back in the lineup in left batting number three. Juan Gonzalez, he's been hot with the bat. He's in right field batting cleanup. Rafael Palmero in round to a career year. He leads the American League in multi-hit games. He's at first base batting number five. Veteran third baseman Tan Zeal hits in the sixth spot. Left-handed hitting first baseman Lee Stevens bats seventh. Royce Clayton at shortstop. And Tom Goodwin, the center fielder, lead it off, round it out, rather, for Texas. These Rangers taking swings against 31-year-old right-hander Kevin Apier. Fastball slider pitcher, a couple other pitches that he does use, but these are the best two pitches he has. Of course, he was acquired in that 731 trading deadline from Kansas City. And according to the catcher, Mike McFarlane, who caught him, of course, in Kansas City, he is still recovering from arm surgery, which took place in March of 1998. His contract has already kicked in next year to Oakland. And if he's better next year, I think he's going to be nothing but a big, big plus to them. McLemore, Rodriguez, and Greer dealing with the early Texas deficit tonight. Kevin Apier overall at 15 and 13, 6 and 4 as in Oakland A in 10 starts. He has given the A's good quality work and has impressed everybody in that Oakland clubhouse with his leadership qualities. That trade meant a whole lot to Oakland. One of a couple of late moves, again, pulled off by Billy Bean. The other big one being getting Omar Olivares and Randy Velarde from the Anaheim Angels. And it really meant a world of difference for Oakland in the second half. Two balls and a strike on Mark McLemore. McLemore, the switch hitter, in from the left side, his better offensive side of the play. Three and one.
From the wide is Apier, his 3-1 home to McLemore fouled away, and a full count starts it for Kevin Apier tonight. McLemore, of course, has been around for a long time. Originally came up with the Angels. Very solid, very steady player. Johnny Oates just loves him. He's had some bad knees over the years, but he's the kind of a guy who's going to be in the lineup all the time when he's healthy. And he can do a lot for you when he gets on base. Full count pitch to him is swung on and hit out the right. Hit very well. Matt steers back, drifting back. He looks up. Good night now, Mark McLemore. Rangers get one of them back in their first at bat in the bottom of the first. Roll up the windows and lock the doors. It just might be one of those American League nights. McLemore is not the kind of a guy that's going to hit a lot of home runs. That is his sixth of the year. But we both mentioned it. We're going to mention it again. The wind is blowing to right field. This is a 3-2 pitch. He challenges him with a fastball, gets it up, and there it goes. Off the bat, looked like a routine pop. Matt Stairs just kept it chasing, and Mark McLemore has his sixth of the year. Yvonne Rodriguez follows up with a shot out to right. This one stays in the yard. Stairs makes the play off the fence. Throw to second base. Not in time. The Texas bats are alive in the bottom of the first. Twenty-seven doubles this year. Here's a guy that just seems to get a little better offensively every year. His average just keeps on going up a little bit. This year at 334 at the start of play tonight, it's going to go up again. 107 RBIs, he scored 100 runs, and he likes to go the opposite field. And that's exactly what he does right here, right over the right fielder set. I mean, he had no chance. Matt Stairs had no chance. Right over his head goes the ball. One in, one on, nobody out. And now it's a left-handed hitting Rusty Greer. A 300 hitter in four of his last five seasons, including three in a row. We're at 299, just a tick under that 300 mark to start playing here tonight. Veteran battery mates, as you mentioned earlier, Ken, Mike McFarlane and Kevin Apier worked as starting battery members in Kansas City for many years, and they want to talk things over here early in the bottom of the first. Yeah, and the wind has changed directions about 90 degrees now, running right now from center field right into home plate. Sometimes that means the rain is coming. <laughs> it is blowing right now, center field right to home plate. It is really whipping that wind, and I'll tell you, this ballpark here in Arlington, gives you about as much wind protection as you can have for a non-dome stadium. Greer bounces to first base. Giambi makes a play. Apier covering, and they get the out on Greer. Yvonne Rodriguez advances to third. Now you talk about the little things, and one of the things we always like to do, we like to talk about the little things in baseball. Greer just does one of the little things. This is a routine ground ball to the right side, but with the runner on second, nobody out. Pitcher's got to cover first. What's the first thing he does? Looks back from the runner going to second to third. And Greer moves the runner up 90 feet, and now the right kind of an out to make this a one-run ball game once again. One out, a man to third, an RBI opportunity for Juan Gonzalez. He has 121 of them already, fifth highest total in the American League. Ooh, that time, nothing in one for Napier. Rusty Greer just doing one of those little things. Doesn't show up in the box scores, but I tell you what, there's about 29, 30 guys in that dugout know exactly what he did. Just having Rusty Greer back is a huge lift for the Rangers. They have been without him for a number of games. He was hitting the left eye with a ball during batting practice a couple of weeks ago. And lucky just to have him back. This is the big man in Texas, make no mistake. 96 98 American League MVP both of those seasons averaging 313 43 bombs and 139 driven in over the last four years it's tough to find that kind of productivity anywhere in baseball count of 0 2 to him if I'm Apier I'm not giving him anything close to the plate he will swing at a lot of bad pitches when he is in a hole he's in a deep hole right now let's see what Apier does to try to strike him out from the stretch 
breaking ball in the dirt, ball in two strikes. Devon Rodriguez at third base. Kevin Apier gave up the leadoff home run to Mark McLemore, then the double to Rodriguez on the next pitch. Rusty Greer moved him over, and Johnny Oates is trying to manufacture a second run here in the bottom of the first. Oakland's going to give him the run. Infield playing well back in every position. Right-hander set again. Got him to bite on the nasty slider. Swing and a miss strike three. Huge strikeout for Apier. The slider, of course, is the best pitch that Apier has, and that's exactly what he got in the chase right there. Bad slider out of the strike zone. And that's exactly what you can do to Gonzalez. But to do that, you better get ahead of him. And he likes to chase those pitches early in the count. A big strikeout for Apier. Now he's got to deal with the left-handed hitting Rafael Palmero. 346 bases. That leads the American League. Rafael Palmero, who has had some great campaigns as a Ranger, as an Oriole, as a Cub, is in the midst of one of his finest in 1999. Look at the hot zone here for Rafael Palmero. Likes the ball about the middle of the plate, right here. 338, 542. 542 right down Broadway. Yeah, hard to understand that one, huh? Nobody wants to throw the ball there. <laughs> Try to work those corners a little bit. Count nothing and one on Rafael Palmero. You know, it would take an unbelievable hot streak for Palmero in the last week of the season. But he still has triple crown type numbers here on September 25. Tied for sixth in the AL in batting average, a number of points under Nomar Garcia Parra. That's going to be a tough category for him to jump up on. Second in home runs with 45. Second in runs batted in with 142. And what makes it tough, especially in the uh, batting average department, is the fact that he played almost every game. For him to get that many hits, he's going to have to get on fire and then some. We talked about his being in competition with Garcia Parra for a batting title. These two are also competing for MVP. Two of the guys in, in the running for the AL MVP award are wearing a Ranger uniform tonight, and that's Paul Merrow and Rodriguez. Manny Ramirez, Derek Jeter, Nomar Garcia Parra, and let's not forget about Pedro Martinez. You can win a Cy Young at an MVP in the same season. I don't think so. I disagree with that. I don't know who put that up. Did you put that up there? That was there? mine. Come on. As a pitcher, you're not going to stick up for me there? MVP is most valuable player, not most valuable pitcher. They give that award to the guy with the Cy Young. Come on, Raleigh. And Pinter. that's as good. Well, I, I'm just disagreeing. I'm just going to disagree. I think, it, I think the MVP is somebody that straps it on every day. Puts on the old uni every day. There are some good candidates there as well. Nothing wrong with that Cy Young award. Gonzalez has won two of them. Three balls and a strike on Palmero. High deep drive to right. This one's going to hang in the house for Matt Stairs. Wind blows it in. The Rangers do get one of them back in the bottom of the first inning on Mark McLemore's leadoff home run. We go to the second, three to one, Oakland. Two of the three winningest teams in Major League Baseball since the All-Star break, the New York Yankees being the other. The A's and Rangers added already tonight with a 3-1 to one score on the board. Dick Bosman, Johnny Oates, and the Rangers on the tail end of an early 3-1 score. We're in the second inning. Eric Chavez leads it off for the A's. Chavez, McFarland in top of the order. Rich Becker. Chavez, last year's minor league player of the year, as called by Baseball America magazine, called the third baseman of the future, and after a very slow start, has really turned it around in the second half for Oakland. There was a time this year that he actually lost his job at one time. He seems to have regained it a little bit. Fans here at the ballpark in Arlington dealing with a windy night. Two balls and two strikes on Eric Chavez. 
Left-handed hitting third baseman takes a call. Strike three. Burkett ties him up on the inside. Fans tonight after the game check out the Macho Macho movie. Oh, baby. <laughs> Yum, yum, yum. Here's Mike McFarland now with one gone. Three strikeouts already for John Burkett. Mike McFarland with dingers in two of his last three ball games. He's got only four on the year. All four of them have come on the road. One thing about McFarland, when he's up, look for him to try to pull every pitch every time. <laughs> he just likes to pull that ball. And he'll take a few pitches too because he likes to crowd that plate a little bit. When the A's and Rangers play one another, the first thing that pops into your mind is all the combined offense. A lot of mashers in these lineups. But when you get Mike McFarland and Pudge Rodriguez on the same field at the same time, you're talking about the guys with the two best caught stealing ratios in the American League. Hey, there's your boy back up the middle. Oh, it proved me a liar, didn't it? <laughs> Watch where the catcher wants the ball. The ball is right there, and he just takes it right back up the old throat. There would be a lot of fans surprised to hear that uh, Pudge Rodriguez's next closest competitor in caught stealings in the American League is this guy, Mike McFarland, at 35 years old, doing a heck of a job behind the plate. Two very good catchers on the field in this one. Now it's Rich Becker back to the top of the order for Oakland. Becker single to start that three-run rally to start the ball game in the first. And of course, McFarland's the kind of a guy that can always help the young catchers coming up in the open system. Good guy to have on your club as a backup. Got some young catching prospects in Oakland they like very much, and McFarland a big part of their development. A.J. Hinch. Had a good big league career. One ball and one strike on Rich Becker. For as young a player as Rich Becker is, he has worn a number of different major league uniforms with experience in both the American and National League. A Met and a Brewer in the NL. A twin, an Oriole, and an Oakland A in the American League. Good size hole for him on the right side of the infield with a runner on. Bounce to second. McLemore to Clayton for one. Back to Stevens. They think the Rangers knew what they were doing when they put McLemore over by that second base back. My goodness. Double play, nothing in the Oakland second. Go back and take a look at that last double play. Look at this hole on the right side for Becker to go to. And watch what happens. He hits it hard on the right side, but too much up the middle. Nice diving stop by McLemore. And once he catches the ball, pretty easy four to six to three double play. And someplace. There's a Rangers Major League Advanced Scout that is patting himself on the back. And those are the guys that don't get a lot of credit, but those are the guys that send in the scouting report. You bet. Here's Todd Zeal leading off the Rangers second. Zeal, Stevens, and Clayton against Kevin Apier here, bottom two. And one of the things that scouting report might have said when dealing with Rich Becker, likes to hit the ball up the middle. That's all it might have to say. Doesn't try to pull the ball a lot, likes to hit the ball up the middle. Zeal lines into left. His career high 165th hit this season. Zeal is having himself a pretty good offensive year. This is a breaking ball, just catches too much of the plate. You know, it's funny, I was talking to Art Howe yesterday in his office, and somebody came in and dropped the scouting report. I said, Art, let me take a look at that. And I've known Art Howe for a long time, and I only read the first paragraph. And you know what the first paragraph said? And, of course, it was about the Texas Rangers. It said, if the first couple of guys don't get on base, the hitters behind them have a tendency to get a little frustrated. Nobody on base, no RBI opportunities. Well, unfortunately for Oakland, 
Each of the leadoff hitters in the first two innings have reached base for the Rangers. Now it's Lee Stevens. And there are a lot of advanced scouts at the game tonight. Gene Michaels is here from the Yankees. Red Sox have an advanced scout here tonight. People are looking ahead to potential playoff matchups. There are some scouts right down there now. It's Dell Unser right there with the gun. He's from Philadelphia. Yankees have two major league advanced scouts out here, as a matter of fact. They've got former big league catcher Bob Didier here as well. Two major league advanced scouts out here for the same team. That's uh, another one to put in the category of the have and the have nots. There are a lot of clubs that don't send anybody out to certain games, but the Yankees with one, two warm bodies at just about every major league venue here at crunch time. Yeah, Ralph Gar is here. Who does Ralph Gar work for? How about the Atlanta Braves? Frank Malzone, the scout from the Red Sox, is here. Haven't seen him all season long. All of a sudden, he's here tonight. Big score in the NL East, a final. New York Mets trying to do an El Foldo. My goodness, is it getting bad for Bobby Valentine's bunch? And it's even worse because of this. Cincinnati wins at home. You're talking about a dead heat for the National League wildcard spot. Oh, my. Boy, a week ago, New York was looking forward to playing the Atlanta Braves and trying to catch them. And all of a sudden, they have been caught from behind. And there they are in the wild card. Identical 92-63s. Cincinnati with the favorable schedule down the stretch as well as Stevens lines to right. Zia will wrap around to third, and the Rangers are in business in the second inning. Lee Stevens, of course, getting a chance to play on a regular basis this year due to the DH job that Palmero has taken. Look at this ball down and in. That's generally where left-handers like that ball down and in. And the pitch track, that's right where they like it. Again, pitch tracks brought to you by questtech.com. Stevens is aboard. Runners at the corners. Again, the first two hitters have reached base against Kevin Apier. He settled down to get Greer, Gonzalez, and Palmero. Only one run against him in the first. He's got Royce Clayton to deal with now. Clayton had a big night last night. Good play by Mike McFarland to remain on top of that ball as Zeal and Stevens have to stay put. Matt, you don't think that the uh, Texas Rangers falling behind 3-0 early in this ballgame are nervous, do you? <laughs> With this kind of offense, this ballpark, no way. Yeah. I think if they're playing a team that, you know, is equal to them, I, I just think that Texas is a better team at Oakland right now. Even though Apier's on the mound, I still think Texas has got an opportunity to win this ballgame. Of course, Oakland could still score a lot of runs, too. This could be a high-scoring affair with lots of bombs. And then therein really lies the good matchup when these two teams play one another. Three swinging teams. The Oakland A's one of the best offenses in the American League. Texas Rangers, they've got three MVP candidates and a very good leadoff hitter who's also a homer tonight. Now, these are mashers in these lineups, one through nine. No way this is going to end at three to one. One and one on Royce Clayton. Tom Goodwin waiting on deck behind Clayton with nobody out. Runners at the corners. Another former Royal here in Texas. Funny, right after that pitch was made, Apier took a look over at the first base umpire as if to say, didn't he swing at it? But of course, Apier can't ask for it. And the first base umpire, of course, is Larry Young, a veteran umpire. Kept his job. I guess he didn't resign, huh? Guess not. Two balls in his track of on Royce Clayton. Big offense last night by the Rangers in the first of the three-game series. And it's important to paint the picture as to how each team got into yesterday's series opener. 
The Oakland A's were fresh from a doubleheader in Baltimore. They had to travel from the West Coast to Baltimore to play a doubleheader on a scheduled off day because of the problems they ran into a couple of weeks earlier with Hurricane Floyd. So Oakland arrived here in Texas a weary bunch for the first in the three-game series yesterday. The Rangers had a day off Thursday, and they really played like a very well-rested bunch of Rangers. They slugged out a lot of runs en route to a trouncing of Oakland. It's funny. I was talking to Art Howe about that trip. They had a day game in Oakland at 12 o'clock. They jumped on a plane, and they had to stop for gas in Rockford, Illinois. They got to Baltimore at 2 a.m. They had a 1 o'clock bus to the ballpark, played a doubleheader, jumped right back on the plane, and got to Dallas at 3 a.m. yesterday. That's a long 24 hours. This has the makings of a long bottom of the second inning. Base on balls for Royce Clayton. That loads the bases for Texas. Tom Goodwin, the hitter. Goodwin has struggled of late. Just two for 13 in his last four games. And an early visit to the mound. Ricky Peterson, of course, the pitching coach of the Oakland A's. Bullpen behind him, which is in left center field, is quiet at this time. Both teams, of course, have brought up a lot of people in their bullpens. Oakland right now with 11 pitchers in their bullpen. I don't think they're worried about tiredness. I think if this game came right down to it, you know, you want one left-handed pitcher to come out of your bullpen and face a left-handed hitter, they can do that. And then they can bring a right-hander in, bring another left-hander in. And that's how many pitchers both these clubs have for this month of the season when you can expand your roster up to 40 players. Yeah, it's the old Earl Weaver adage out there as well, to never save a pitcher for tomorrow. Tomorrow it may rain. Zeal at third, Stevens at second, Clayton at first, a big jam for Apier in the bottom of the second inning. Apier trying to protect a 3-1 to one Oakland lead. One ball, no strikes to the speedy Tom Goodwin. One thing good about Goodwin, even if he's not hitting, this guy gets on base, he's got great speed. 37 stolen bases tied for third. They got great speed at the bottom of the lineup with him in the lineup. Of course, anytime he gets on base, he becomes even more of a threat. And all of a sudden, he falls behind now 2-0. This is not the kind of a guy you want to fall behind you. Get ahead. Kevin Apier's last start, he went into the seventh inning and took a 4 nothing loss at Minnesota. He has given the A's nothing but durable start since coming over from Kansas City. Good one, slaps the base hit into right. That's going to play at least one. Zeal scores easily. Here's Stevens right on his heels, and the Rangers have tied it at three feet. Well, it didn't take him long to catch up. One plus inning. We are tied at three. Doesn't knock the ball real hard. Just slaps it into right field. Look at him. Puts the bat on the ball. Big hole over there. Finds the hole. Clayton with good speed on first. Goes all the way around to third. First and third now. Still nobody out. Back to the top of the order. Mark McLemore. He homered in the bottom of the first. Lamore started the series just six for 27 lifetime against Kevin Apier. Plenty of battles between these two American League veterans. His 34th career dinger coming to lead off the bottom of the first. He's got two runners aboard here with nobody out. And takes strike one from Apier. Mark McLemore heated up last night for the Rangers. We showed you earlier he was three for five against Oakland in last night's ball game. He had been just two for his previous 23 covering six games. 
In fact, that was a problem that the entire Ranger lineup had suffered from. Getting into that series opener yesterday, the Rangers had played 21 consecutive games against teams under 500, and in those games, Texas went 10 and 11. I don't know if it was a problem of getting up for a sub-500 team or if there were just weren't very good matchups, whatever the case was. The Rangers struggled against some of those second division teams over the last three weeks. But in this big series, their bats have really answered the bell. And we're having some action now behind Kevin Apier, left-hander Ron Mayhay. But even though Art House bullpen is deep with September roster expansion, the last thing he wants to do is get into that group in the first two, three, four innings. And I think he'd rather see Apier get a, a little better control of himself right now. Tomorrow in the finale of this series, Oakland's going to call up a triple-A pitcher to pitch here on Sunday. Kevin Jarvis is going to come up from triple-A Vancouver. That one bounces away from McFarlane. It's going to score Clayton from third. Texas takes a lead. Four, three Rangers on the wild pitch from Apier. You know, Oakland came to town hoping to sweep. They got hammered last night. They take a lead tonight. Breaking ball in the dirt. He tried to let the ball come to him, and it just goes right off the body, right off the glove, and he can't find it. Can't find it right now. Looking. There it is. And everybody picks up 90 feet. So now the speedy Tom Goodwin at second base, in addition to Clayton scoring. Rangers have their first lead of the night. Next offering home to McLemore, fouled away. Look out in the first base box at Napoleon. Get the header coming out of the stands. I would say if you're a fan on this Major League Baseball Saturday, you'd best serve yourself staying in your seat in light of what happened last night in Milwaukee. You're talking about our friend Mr. Spires. Talking about Bill Spires getting attacked last night by a fan who went nuts and jumped him from the stands. I think security all over Major League Baseball is going to be looking for that thing a little more often. The unfortunate thing about that incident is that anybody, anytime, can really, if they have the nerve, run out onto the field whenever they want. Of course, they're going to get arrested. But it's not that hard to run on the field if you want to, but it is definitely very wrong, especially if you're going to go out there and you're going to sneak attack somebody. You bet. It is two balls and two strikes on Mark McLemore. Kevin Apier still looking for his first out here in the bottom of the second. And he's got that guy to deal with on deck, Yvonne Rodriguez. That didn't miss by much. Full count now, three and two. First and second, still nobody out for Pudge. Seemed like about 20 minutes ago it was three nothing athletic off to a great start. All of a sudden they are falling behind. Still nobody out. Runners on first and second. Oakland digging himself a hole right here, and they're going to get back on the phone. They're not going to waste much more time here with Apier. Pitching coach Rick Peterson on the phone, and he said he's ready. Wow, he better be ready by now. <laughs> Again, the last thing Oakland wanted to deal with was problems on the mound as early as the second inning. Now it's Rodriguez. He hit the first pitch he saw in the bottom of the first for a double into right. Banged it against the wall out there. If there's one guy in the Rangers lineup that has owned Apier over the years, it is Rodriguez. He is now 14 for 43 lifetime, and he has thrown already 42 pitches. And look at the strikes and the ball right about even. That's the wrong number right there. 22 and 20 is not the right number. 
I think this conference is taking place because before that first pitch, Rodriguez looked like he was going to square around to try to sacrifice, and I think that's not what Johnny Oates wants him to do. Ron Mayhay ready to go. Huge at bat for Aper if he wants to stay around tonight. Huge at bat for Oakland here against Yvonne Rodriguez. Nothing and one to the eight time All Star with McLemore and Goodwin aboard. Well hit to right center. Becker and Stairs are there. Matt Stairs pulls it in. Goodwin advances easily to third. Hutch going to the opposite field nicely for the second straight at bat. It's almost as if he was looking up at the wind saying, wait a minute, why didn't that ball get out of here? Well, the wind has changed again. The wind is blowing in now. It's not blowing out to right field. Looking at the right fielder, looking at the ball. And when he sees the right fielder put his arm up as if to say, I've got it, you know, I think his head went down a little bit. All right, blowing in again. Wind has been changing a little bit on us here tonight. Here's Rusty Greer now, runners at the corners in one away. Rusty Greer again just got back into the lineup on a permanent basis yesterday. After playing just four innings on Tuesday, he was hit in the eye with a thrown ball during batting practice September 13th in Kansas City. Bruised retina and blurred vision resulted in that miscue. Also broke his nose, not to mention, uh, you know, he looked a little black and blue. But the good news is that there was no permanent damage to the optic nerve. That was something that Greer was very worried about as his collision vision was blurred, rather, for a good week. Of course, and, any, anytime you get blurry vision as a hitter, you've got a good reason to be upset and concerned. This is a guy they need on their club. You know, we talk about all the MVPs that were, you know, we're talking about Rodriguez, Palmero, Gonzalez. This guy does a great job, but he's a backup guy. Not an MVP candidate, but if you look at the numbers that he puts on the board every year, you know, he's got a chance to do 100 RBIs this year. He quietly goes out in the left field, does a great job defensively, runs the bases well, plays every day, and doesn't get the ink that the other guys get. He's a solid player. And behind eight, you're here, nothing in two. Lined into right center, that's going to score one more. Good one walks home, McLemore wraps around at third. The fourth run of the inning, 5-3, Texas. Ninety-six RBIs now on the season for Rusty Greer. Right back up the middle. Boy, they're playing him deep in the outfield. I think they're really taking into account the wind that's blowing. Let's take a look and see how they pitched to Gonzalez the last time he was up. All the pitches out of the strike zone. He fell behind 0-2. And, and he gets him on a pitch out of the strike zone at 80 miles an hour. And that's the best way to pitch to Gonzalez. Make him hit your pitch early in the count, but definitely get him out with balls. you got to get ahead to do that. Good block by McFarland. Greer will advance, however, and that takes the double playoff. That's a big 90 feet for Texas. Another wild pitch charge to Apier. Now, if you look at the hot zone from Juan Gonzalez, it gives you an idea of where you want to pitch him. And there it is right there, folks. 194. You get ahead of him, and you throw him down there at 194, you are going to get a lot of outs. But look at the red zones. He can kill you there. Just don't miss high. Tied him up that time. One ball and one strike from Kevin Abu. First four hitters that have come to the plate here in the Texas second half scored. Suddenly a different story for John Burkett. He's working with a lead. Big swing and a miss by Gonzalez there. 
Gonzalez 284 this season with runners in scoring position. That has been one of his strong suits in his career as a Ranger. McLemore and Greer, the base runner he, he, he has to work with here in the second inning. Only one away. Breaking ball in the dirt, two and two. Rafael Palmero, the on-deck hitter, it gets no easier with the left-hander due up. So far, four runs on four hits and a pair of walks. Got him swinging. Got him on the same slider that he rung him up on in the first inning. Big K for Apier. Gets him for the second time, and both times he gets him with runners in scoring position, and both times in the 194 zone. Look at the pitch track. Same place he got him the last time to strike out, same place this time, and they are going to put on with the intentional base on balls, Palmero. They'll take their chances with Todd Zeal. This will load the bases with two men out. You never like to load the bases, but this becomes close to a no-brainer for Art Howe. There's no way you want to let Palmero, the left-hander, beat you with first base open. Todd Zeal on deck, batting 40 points lesser than Rafael Palmero, and a right-handed batter. Be a lot easier for Apier to try and get out of this jam against a right-handed hitter, and there's ball four to Palmero. The first intentional, the third overall base on balls for Apier this inning. Pretty good speed out there for Texas. McLemore at third, Greer at second, Palmero at first. And a huge opportunity for Todd Zia. Todd Zia, one of those guys that exactly, well, hasn't exactly had a bad year. Look at his average, 292. He's got 92 RBIs. I mean, we got some big numbers here tonight. And you said it yourself so well, Matt. Could be a slugfest. Yeah, there's strike one to Zia. Todd Zeal has seen very little of Kevin Apier at the start of play today. Just 0 for 3 lifetime against the Oakland right-hander. One ball and one strike. just trying to stay alive in this inning. Base hit now would be very, very devastating for him. How about a salami? That's even worse. The zeal of approval for Texas. Touch them all time. Grand slam for zeal. And the Rangers have exploded for eight runs in the second. Zeal, 96 RBIs, and he hangs a curveball. Just spun it up there, hung it. And it's not like Todd Kirchett. It is still a grand slam. About two or three rows deep in left field. And it is nine to three. And the Texas Rangers are rolling their magic number. I believe after this ball game, if they can win it, it will go down to one. That's going to be all for Kevin Apier. An early exit for the Oakland starter. Enter lefty Ron Mayhay. Damage control for the A's. We'll be right back. Has just hit his second grand slam this season. The seventh in his career. And it has contributed mightily into an eight-run attack for the Texas Rangers in the second inning. Now 9-3 Texas and Oakland goes to the bullpen very early for left-hander Ron Mayhay. Spent most of his year at Vancouver this year. He's 5-0 with an ERA of under 3 at 2.68, mostly in a starting role. Yeah. 
He's done a pretty good job with the sacks full this year. 565 with two grand slams this year. And for Ron Mayhay and the Oakland A's, no more offense by, by the Texas Rangers. This is the second straight big offensive output that the Rangers have put up against the very weary Oakland A's. And a called strike three taken by Lee Stevens. That'll end the inning. 11 hitters, eight runs. After two, nine, three, Texas Seals. Tonight by the Rangers, Todd Zeal and the Rangers know they have to score a lot of runs against the Yankees if they get to the postseason. I think that we have to score the runs that we're capable of scoring, and I think that what's usually been the pattern in our games against them is their pitching has held us down better than our pitching has held them down. I think our pitching has done a good job against their lineup for the most part. Um, Cone, El Duque, Pettit in particular have held our lineup down, and, uh, and I don't think we've scored the runs that this offense is capable of scoring. It's getting tough for the Texas Rangers and their fans not to cheat a little bit in the schedule and look past next week, a three-game series with Seattle, a three-game series with Anaheim, and try to look at that first playoff series and try to guess at least as to who it will be. All indications are that the Rangers are going to once again have to try and go through the Yankees if they're going to advance in the playoffs this year. And the only, uh, the only way that would change, I think, would be if Texas can have a better record than Cleveland. Randy Velarde opens the Oakland third with a pop-up for Mark McLemore, and there's one gone. Rangers trying to win their third American League Western Division championship in the last four seasons. They are one and six against the Yankees over their last two postseason series. It really hasn't gone very far. And when you look at the best record in the American League, it is New York by a half game over Cleveland, and the Rangers three and a half back. Jason Giambi, the batter now. There's a drive, well hit to right. Juan Gonzalez is there for it, however, and there are two gone for John Burkett. You know, due to the dynamics of the, uh, the postseason equation, and this is new for 1999, the wild card winner cannot play the division winner from the same division. That's always been a rule, I thought, hasn't it? I believe that's uh, I believe that's a change for 99. Regardless, it exists. We'll, we'll agree. John we'll agree on that. <laughs> Strike one to John. So that means if the Red Sox are to win the National League or American League wild card, rather, they of course could not play the New York Yankees. And if it ends the way it is now. T minus three and counting here in Texas. So it'll be the Rangers and Yankees again in the postseason. And of course, what that three means, every time Texas wins, it goes down by one. Every time Oakland loses, it goes down by one. So they're playing each other tonight. Number could be one tomorrow morning. So if Texas wins tonight, wins tomorrow, El Bencho, it's all over. Texas is the champion. Oakland is also playing for a possible wild card berth, but in the American League East, New York has a five-game advantage over Boston. The Red Sox were winners today. Jaha grounds to McLemore, and the A's go down and out in three at-bats in the third. Two and a half gone. All Rangers early tonight. Up in the Texas third, Clayton Goodwin and McLemore here in the third inning against reliever Ron Mayhay. The Rangers on nine runs, seven hits have driven starter Kevin Apier to an early shower tonight. Apier done after an inning in two-thirds, and it's Mayhay to try and control this Ranger lineup for a while. The former Boston Red Sox, who actually played in the minor league system of the Sox, is an outfielder. Dealing to Royce Clayton here, leading things off in the bottom of the third. A one-hopper for Eric Chavez, and one gone in the bottom of the third inning. When you talk about the American League West, you're talking about two teams really at the head of the line in Oakland and Texas. But a second division American League Central team has really meant the difference in the standings between Oakland and Texas. Against the Minnesota Twins this year, the Texas Rangers were a perfect 12-0. The Oakland A's stumbled against the young Twins 5-7. Rounded to the right side. 
Randy Velarde's got it, and there are two gone. Tomorrow on FX, Major Movie Sunday swings into action with past scandals and futuristic creatures. At 4.30, John Cusack helps his team lose the World Series in eight men out. And at 7, Sigourney Weaver's on a mission to search and destroy an alien. Look yep. out for stuff coming out of your stomach. Yum, yum, yum. That's tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> That's a yum, yum. Here's Mark McLemore now. A swing and a miss for Mayhem. I didn't realize that Texas was 12 and 0 against Minnesota. I don't care how how good or how bad Minnesota is. To go 12 and 0 against any team is pretty hard to imagine. You bet. Well, that really has meant a difference at the start of this one tonight. Oakland trailed Texas by six and a half, and that's a seven-game swing. Oakland five and seven against Minnesota. Texas 12 and 0. That has meant a whole lot, and, and the losses last week against Minnesota really aggravated Art Howe. Hayes gave a couple away. There's a pop-up for Velarde. And a 1-2-3 third turned in by Ron May. The first third is in the books tonight. Rangers on top tonight at the uh, ballpark. You know a lot about toys. For a guy, young guy that's not married, you know a lot about toys. Oh, don't think I don't have a closet full of Tickle Me Elmo cameras. <laughs> I made a couple of trips to the parking lot with the same ticket stuff tonight. They were giving those away tonight? Yeah. And I didn't know about it? I got a couple for you. Don't worry. Thank you, buddy. Matt Stairs leads things off in the Oakland fourth. Stairs, Grieve, and Tejada. Oakland down by six. Still plenty of time for the A's in this one tonight. A big masher lineup led by this big masher, Matt Stairs. 38 home runs for him. Oakland blew their chance early in this, early in this game when the wind was blowing out. They had to get him early because now the wind seems to be consistently blowing in. And Stairs lifts a fly ball into the opposite field. In short left, Zeal and Clayton talking about it. Tom Zeal makes the catch. Now, when you talk about the Rangers going to the postseason, talk about how Johnny Oates wants to align his pitching staff. Aaron Seeley is the uncontested ace. Will John Burkett have a chance to pitch? It might depend on the matchup. Burkett has really struggled against the Yankees this season. He has dominated the Cleveland Indians. And, of course, people, I, I, I believe... You can change your roster from one series to the next series. Your series is your roster is set for one series. If you get past that series, you can add or subtract a few people for the next series. So Burkett, obviously, if they played Cleveland, you would think he'd get an opportunity to play. Ben Grieve, the batter now. Grieve singled in the two runs in the first inning. A third would score on an error to Juan Gonzalez. Oakland was off to the races 3-0 after a half inning, but what a difference a couple innings can make for the Rangers. They have tacked on nine unanswered. You know, that matchup between Burkett and the Indians, Burkett and the Yankees, really plays into a pattern. Grieve pops it up. Todd Zeal's got it. Too gone. The Yankees are a very good off-speed hitting team. A lot of the Cleveland hitters struggle against the location control guys such as John Burkett, and that matchup has been that way for a couple of years. The Indians really haven't gotten much done against John Burkett dating back to 96. Two gone now for Miguel Tejada. Art Howe says that Tejada, probably the most improved player on his team this year, has come a long ways. One ball and one strike on the second year shortstop. Had a nine-game hitting streak coming into last night's, but took an over, ending his longest streak of the year. A's have developed some very good shortstops over the past handful of seasons, including Tony Batista, who has since moved on, currently up in Toronto having a good year. Mike Bordick, of course, came up with Oakland. And Tejada is only 23 years old. I mean, he's just a kid. I mean, he's got to, he's got a lot to learn about this game, but you know, obviously, he's got great skill.
Fly ball lifted into the opposite field. Juan Gonzalez calling for it. Another 1 2 3 inning for John Birkin. Middle of the fourth. Texas on top big. Ballpark in Arlington where the home team Rangers are rolling on this Saturday night. Matt Vaskersian back with Ken Brett. It is a 9 3 Ranger lead. As we get back to baseball in the bottom half of the fourth inning of Von Rodriguez leads it off for Texas Rodriguez Greer and Gonzalez against reliever Ron Mayhay who made an early appearance in this one tonight after Kevin Apier was unable to get through the second inning. Yeah Apier's numbers in this ball game not pretty to look at one and two thirds inning seven hits nine runs they were all earned three walks and of course they all scored and two base on balls. Ron Rodriguez. Todd Zeal has certainly played a, a role in this one tonight so far with a grand slam that capped the eight run second. Rodriguez has doubled in two trips to the plate. Led on a fastball two and one. He is in route to a career year is Yvonne Rodriguez his former career best at 321 average in 1998. You can see this year bidding 335, sixth best in the AL. He is on the leaderboard in hits, runs, and multi-hit games, having an outstanding campaign. Two and two. One of the reasons that people were chasing that ball, first baseman came over to chase that ball, but once it got up in the air, the wind just blew it 15, 20 rows back. Wind blowing still from the outfield right around toward that first base home plate dugout. See those flags they are blowing up there. Two balls and two strikes to the eight time all star Ivan Rodriguez. Fudge lines to right. Matt Stairs is coming on forward. He makes the catch. Wind tried to take it away from him but Stairs hung with it and there's one away. Partial score from the National League East. The Atlanta Braves have a 5-3 lead in Montreal. That one's in the top of the eighth inning. More bad news for the Mets. That's what it looks like in the East currently. New York five and a half back of Atlanta. The Braves' magic number has shrunk to three. Well, you and I were at Shea Stadium just last weekend. There was nobody wearing red there because the Phillies were in town but the Phillies are having a rough time of it. New York rolled over the Phillies in that game we had last Saturday on FX baseball Saturday night. We were talking about how the Mets were making plans not only to go to the uh, the postseason party as a wild card winner but maybe as a division winner. The Mets of course were looking up they were not looking back and I remember that series very well Philadelphia beats them on Friday night. And I think there was a big wake up call to the Mets on Saturday and Sunday before the Atlanta series. So the Mets beat Philadelphia Saturday and Sunday and then they go down to Atlanta and they get swept. They score six runs in three ball games, and then they go up to Philadelphia. Philadelphia is four and 18. Four wins 18 losses in September and all of a sudden they lose two in a row in Philly. And they are. I, 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 I'd hate to see those papers in New York tomorrow. Oh, oh scalding. Oh. Just scalding. <laughs> A unforgiving New York print media. Rusty Greer swats a pop up into short center. Tejada's out there, as is Velarde. And Randy Velarde makes a grab. I mean, they were all over the New York Mets last week when they lost the Friday night game to Philadelphia. Well, they've lost five in a row now. Here is Juan Gonzalez now. He was a strikeout victim in each of his two at-bats against Kevin Apier. That magic slider, good enough to do it for Apier. Really the only batter in the Ranger lineup he had any success against. Gonzalez batting here with the bases empty and two gone. The somewhat enigmatic superstar who this year declined an opportunity to go to Boston and play in the All-Star game. Really angered a lot of people here around Rangerland. But it's awfully tough to argue with the numbers. Swing and a miss. Burkett found himself in the hole before his team came to the plate tonight. 3-0. He's a little happier now. 
up by nine to three, and he settled down. And the Mets, not the Mets, of course, but Oakland just making a lot of outs. And Johnny Oates is, well, he's just kind of cruising along right here, thinking maybe the magic number goes down to uno, down to one. To end this thing tomorrow and get himself set up for the playoffs. Been a pretty good couple of weeks for Johnny Oates. He and Doug Melvin, the general manager down here in Texas, each got their contracts renewed recently. Management happy with the job that Johnny Oates has done, certainly. Tough to argue with his success record. Swing and a miss, strike three by Gonzalez. He struck out three times tonight. A one, two, three, fourth for Ron Mayhay. We head to the fifth. Rangers still on top, nine to three. Fifth inning for the A's, and he offers it the first pitch from John Burkett and grounds out harmlessly to Mark McLemore. One gone to start the fifth for the Ranger right-hander, who has not allowed a hit since one out in the second. Indeed, that is eight in a row laid down by John Burkett. Now it's Mike McFarland. McFarland singled in the second, then was cut down in a nicely turned 4-6-3 Ranger double play. McLemore, of course, turning the double play that really was a big play in this ball game at the time. The ball that appeared headed into center field for a base hit. Three balls, no strikes on Mike McFarland. I don't think McLemore has the range that he had five years ago, but he's still got good hands. If he can get to the ball, he's going to make the play. Burkett finds a strike three and one now. One of the things that the Oakland A's have done very well all year long is display patience at the plate, as McFarland does to draw the one-out walk. The A's lead the American League in walks offensively. A young love blossoming here at the ballpark in Arlington. Look at that. That's one small step for man. <laughs> and one <laughs> giant leap for man. That's time. one giant leap for that guy. <laughs> Nothing in one on Rich Becker. Becker has singled and scored tonight. Takes a strike from Berkey. Count nothing in two. You know, you, you had talked about the Oakland Athletics leading the American League in base on balls. They're 12th in batting average, 259. And I think one of the reasons that they have scored so many runs is there's a lot of people on base because they take the base on balls. There's a check swing for strike three. Didn't like the call. And there's two outs. Monday through Thursday at 10, get ready for the Mondays. He's a shoe salesman, she's a couch potato. They're dysfunctional and they're married with children. Check them out Monday through Thursday at 10 on FX. Hello, Newman. <laughs> Is that one of the children in Married with Children? Very well could be. <laughs> Very well could be. Randy Velarde now with two gone. McFarland remains aboard at first base. And I think one of the reasons that Velarde got traded for the Angels, he and Terry Collins got into it a bit. When some of the Angels went to the front office and said, we don't want this manager around again. Billy Bavese, of course, rehired him. And, of course, we all know what happened after that. Terry retired, and, of course, Randy, Randy Velarde was gone. And I think it was a, just a confrontation, a difference of opinion between, between two guys. Randy Velarde has really enjoyed his brief stay with the Oakland A's. He's expressed interest in returning. The A's have expressed interest in bringing him back. However, Velarde is going to command some big dollars next year. And if the A's are going to try and retain guys like John Jaha, guys like Kevin Apier, who's got an option that could kick in, they're going to have to bump that payroll up, something that the current ownership has said they have no problem in doing. Well, we're going to find out the answer to that question real soon. Don't forget, Oakland's new ownership group was turned down. 
Oakland has not drawn real well down the stretch, even though they played good baseball. And you're right. The Lord is going to want more money. And there's lots of guys that are having good years for the Oakland A's, and they're going to want new money and more money. And we'll see what happens in the offseason. But, of course, Art Howe would like to improve upon his team this year. And Art has a contract for next year, but it's only a one-year contract. And Art wouldn't like the contract, but spread them out a little deeper. It is one ball, two strikes on Randy Velarde. Well, look at Velarde's numbers when you talk about the, the money the A's are going to have to pay or somebody to get him to play for him next year. Currently, there are eight other second basemen making more money than Randy Velarde in the American League. But his batting average, 314, is second only to Roberto Alomar's at that position. It doesn't make too much sense. This should be among the better paid guys at second base. McLemore would be one of the players, of course, that would make more. McLemore, I don't know what he makes, but I know it's more than Velarde. you got to remember about Velarde, he missed almost two years with arm problems. And he's no kid anymore. He's about 35, 36 years old. He lines into center. Tom Goodwin drifts over. He can run him down with the best of them. And the A's leave a base runner in the fifth. We're midway through tonight. Rangers still on top big. In that ceremony, that must have been a special night for you, huh? Very special. Of course, everybody in the family was there, and uh, it was a great time. Great time. Four days of fun. Rafael Palmero leads off this fifth inning of fun for the Rangers. Palmero, Zeal, and Stevens against the reliever Ron Mayhe. Four days. I would, yeah, <laughs> I had to go and take in all the, uh, all the events. Palmero pops into right. Canadian-born Matt Stairs is there for it. And there's one gone. Well, last time Todd Zeal came up to bat, the bases were loaded. He was sitting on six career grand slams, and this was what happened with Kevin Apier on the mound. Second slam of the season for Todd Zeal, and that really opened up the scoring. It made it 9-3 Rangers, and that's where we currently sit. You know, one thing I would say about the Hall of Fame, if you're a baseball fan and you like and you like to go away for the weekend and, you know, go to a kind of an out-of-the-way place, Cooperstown is a wonderful town. Lots of nice places to go around there, other small towns. But the Hall of Fame is a fabulous place to go. I mean, it is just, it is incredible what they have there, and there's lots of neat stores that sell baseball stuff. A couple of great hotels and uh, well worth your time to go. I would agree. Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown, New York, and the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Cleveland, Ohio. Two greatest places in this great land of ours, Ken. One gone is to how to retire zeal. <laughs> Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. <laughs> okay. You ever been there? <laughs> they were building it the last time I was in Cleveland. I'll tell you, what's worth the price of admission for me alone is uh, the last remaining drum from Keith Moon's drum set that he blew up on the Smothers Brothers show in 1968. Wow. I mean, now that is an artifact that is worth my, my dollar. Take a look at it. Here's Lee Stevens now with two away. I mean, not that I didn't enjoy Cooperstown. I think that's a great building. You know the one problem I have with Cooperstown is that so much of the great baseball memorabilia is in the hands of private collectors now Cooperstown, which is where all that stuff belongs in my book, has trouble getting a hold of things these days. Well, they, they have money in Cooperstown to buy some of that stuff. I just don't think they can compete this, with some of the private collectors. It's too bad. But they do have a lot of good stuff there. In fact, if you ever get a chance to go to Cooperstown, I suggest you, 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 you tell them who you are, and you're a big guy with Fox, of course, <laughs> especially FX. Now let you down in the basement. Look at all the stuff they don't have room to show. Oh, have you been down there? Of course. Wow. Well, to my new you. Now that's what it's all about right there. That one's lined into the corner, foul by Lee Stevens. Count goes to one and two. Lee Stevens, of course, has good power. 23 home runs on the season. You know, he came up with the California Angels. He was going to be their first baseman after Wally Joyner. And he didn't do a good enough job in California's mind, whether he got a full chance to play. You know, 
Some people will never know, but he went over to Japan and played for a couple years. Some people think he really learned to get a hold of himself and to learn how to hit while he was in Japan. And since coming back here to Texas, he's been a good player. Good, solid player. Mostly a DH, of course. But with Palmero having knee problems this year, he's had a chance to play, and he's done a terrific job. Two balls and two strikes on Lee Stevens. Base is empty two away. Ron Mayhay has been strong since coming out from the bullpen, and he rings up Lee Stevens to make for a 1-2-3 fit. Nine in a row, retired by the A, reliever through five. Texas on top, nine to three. Washington with the Rangers on top of the Oakland A's, nine to three Rangers to score. And a reminder, this copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Commissioner of Baseball and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent. Check all the hats they have for sale. I'll tell you what, we've been looking at this. I like that hat right there. Somebody go buy me that hat, please. <laughs> Send somebody from the truck to pick me up that hat. I like it. And while you're at it, uh, I'd like to get myself a um, Rico Cardi jersey. Please, wait, wait, Rico? Rico Cardi jersey. You mean your Rico? Rico Cardi, the big boy. <laughs> They've got Rodriguez. Paul. What about a Cecil Espy jersey? <laughs> Come on, some of the great Rangers. Of, how about a Jeff Burroughs jersey? A Jim Kern, maybe. You can get a Rodriguez jersey anywhere. <laughs> Jason Giambi leads things off in the Oakland Six. Giambi, Jaha, and Stairs here in the sixth inning. Well, Oakland's got four innings left to try and catch the Rangers. The offense has slowed down since the Rangers scored eight in the bottom of the second. They have recorded ten straight outs against reliever Ron Mayhe, who has done a good job to keep Oakland in this ballgame. Yeah, Ron Mayhe, if nothing else, trying to improve his plight in the pitching plans for Art Howe perhaps next year. Two balls and two strikes on Jason Giambi. Jason Giambi again was drafted in 92, the year the A's went last went to the postseason. They lost in a playoff series to Toronto that year. And there is ball four. Giambi's aboard to start the sixth inning. This game started out in the first inning with a lot of promise for Art Howe. A ground ball by Ben Grieve that got through the hole on the right side and then got past Juan Gonzalez. It scored three runs. Oakland was off to the races in the first. But the Rangers have countered with nine unanswered, including the big grand slam by third baseman Todd Zeal. And John Burkett, despite that early damage, is working with a six-run lead here in the sixth. Here's John Jaha now with the runner on. One ball and one strike to John Jaha, who is hitless tonight, 0 for 2, and who, as we told you earlier, has slowed down a bit over the past week. That notwithstanding, he has enjoyed a fine season in his first as an Oakland A. Two and one. When the Milwaukee Brewers went to the National League for the 98 season, it became difficult for them to keep John Jaha in the lineup every night. He's had some leg problems the past couple of years. He is ideally suited for that DH spot, and he's aboard here with a base hit to left. Well, you would think at some point in this ball game, Oakland's going to try to take another run at Texas, and maybe this is going to be the inning here in the sixth inning. First and second, nobody out. Here's Matt Stairs now with runners aboard. Nothing and one on Matt Stairs. 
Nice pitch right there. Fastball tailing down and away from the left-hander. He's got him in a hole now, 0-2. This is the way Burkett's got to pitch if he's going to be successful because he's got good stuff. He changes speeds, and he's got to be able to move the ball inside and outside. Line foul, and it stays 0-2 on Matt Stairs. Well, Matt Stairs had played a long time in professional baseball before he really kind of came on the scene. Something like 9, 10 years in the minor leagues. We talked about how he is one of the Canadian-born big leaguers out there currently, along with Larry Walker, and number four on the Canadian-born home run leader list. Jeff Heath, second behind Larry Walker, of no relation to former Oakland A catcher Mike Heath. And it's one and two on Matt Stairs. Runners aboard for the A's with nobody out. Chance to get back in this ball game here in the sixth inning for Oakland. Stairs with a big pop-up into right center. Goodwin chasing it down. One away. Fans, join us next Thursday on Fox Sports Net as these pennant races heat up. Fox Sports Net has tremendous coverage of Braves and the Mets or the Padres and the Diamondbacks. Check your local listings for the game and time in your area. And then expanded coverage on Friday. You'll see either the Cubs at St. Louis or San Diego at Arizona. That special Friday pennant race baseball, Fox Sports Net Baseball, Thursday and Friday this coming week. One gone in the sixth inning here in Arlington. Runners aboard for Oakland. And Arlington native Ben Grieve with the bat. Ben Grieve still the reigning American League Rookie of the Year. Fine campaign in 98 as an A. A former Oakland A number one draft selection along with his father Tom Grieve who uh, of course played many years in the big leagues. A former Ranger general manager and is here in the ballpark tonight as one of the television announcers for the Texas Rangers. They are the first and only father-son number one draft pick combination in history. I'll tell you what, you talk to Tom Grieve, and I, I, I've known Tom Grieve for a long time, having played with him in the minor leagues and against him in the big leagues. He sure likes being the broadcaster, and there's a picture of Tom right there, because he said, as, as a general manager of this club in the seventh inning, if a guy got hurt, he'd be up half the night trying to find somebody to take his place. Now, when the game is over, he goes home. <laughs> Doesn't have to worry about those phone calls. He goes home and he peels open a box score from Oakland to see what his son Ben has done. It's right on the internet. Gets all the information. He likes being a broadcaster. <laughs> Grieve has Giambi at second and Jahad first. And as much as Tom Grieve likes being a broadcaster for the Rangers, his son Ben, while very happy as an Oakland A, likes coming back to hit in Arlington. He has hit the Rangers very well throughout his career. Very big numbers here at the ballpark in Arlington for young Ben Grieve. A 346 hitter against Texas with seven home runs in just about two years of head-to-head -head play. Reeve bounces towards the middle. Clayton gets one himself and throws to Stevens for the other a 6-3 to three double play. Second twin killing of the night by the Ranger infield. A's are turned away in the sixth. To the bottom half, still 9-3 Texas. Faithful is having a good time tonight. A big win for the Rangers last night in the first game of the series over the A's. And they're on top big here tonight as we go to the bottom of the sixth inning. Royce Clayton leads it off against Ron Mayhay, who has still not allowed a base runner since coming on in relief of Kevin Apier in the second inning. Clayton Goodwin and McLemore here in the Rangers sixth. Yeah, Mayhay has done an excellent job in coming on in place of Apier. I mean, 10 up and 10 down. Nothing in two on the right-handed hitter, Royce Clayton. 
Clayton's been in the big league since 1991 when he broke in with the Giants and went on the disabled list for the first time in his career earlier this season. Very steady, consistent contributor is Royce Clayton. in the bottom of the sixth inning in Milwaukee. The Brewers on top of Houston 3-1. to one. Astros with a late lead, late come from behind win yesterday. What it does to the National League Central. It's not a final yet, but Houston on top by two over Cincinnati. What, Houston score about seven runs late in the ball game to take one away from the Brewers. Little soft pop into center field. Rich Becker runs it down, and there's one away. You know, we had talked about the Cincinnati Reds finally catching somebody. It seemed like they were always chasing Houston or chasing the uh, second-place team in that division, the Mets. Well, they finally caught the Mets, and they got their eyes perhaps on Houston right now. They could pull to within one game if Houston does not win. So Cincinnati definitely in the playoff picture. Make no mistake about that. Tom Goodwin now with one away. You know, we talked about how the schedule favors Cincinnati in the final week of the season. You talk about the last series of the year and the last week of play. For the wild card, at least, the Mets have to play Atlanta again, three games at Shea Stadium, and they've got a series with the Pittsburgh Pirates. And the Pirates are a strong club. A little easier road to hoe for the Reds as they end the season with three in Milwaukee. And I got to believe it's going to come down to that last weekend of baseball next weekend to decide who's going on to the big dance. We'll, of course, have coverage on FX Saturday Night Baseball next weekend. Some matchups to be determined. We will be right there to bring you some of that playoff race baseball next weekend. Ken and I will be awaiting our assignment. In fact, I think I'm going to find out Monday where I'm going to go. You going to let me know? <laughs> I'll see you when I get there. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the same place we're all going to go. The crew. The crew yeah. travels together. We'll all be there. One and two to Tom Goodwin. A swing and a miss. Ron Mayhay just flat out dealing out there tonight, folks. He has struck out four. Week nights at 11, it's the X Show. Let our hosts be your guide through the confusing world of women. You'll see pageants, get advice, play games, and if you pay very close attention, you may even score, quote unquote. The X Show, week nights at 11, only on FX. They generally speak of women between the ages of 21 and 35 on the X Show. That little gal so lined out to center. Rich Becker runs down McLemore's fly ball. About 13 in a row, mowed down by Ron Mayhay through 6-9-3 Rangers. Baseball lost some good friends during the 1999 season. Gone but not forgotten are the Yankee Clipper, Joe DiMaggio, Brooklyn's own Pee Wee Reese, Jim Catfish Hunter, and Joe Adcock. Thanks for all the memories. Baseball will never forget you. Back at the ballpark in Arlington as we continue looking back at the 99 season. There is still plenty to look ahead to, including a great playoff picture in the American League, of which the A's and Rangers are certainly a part of it. Miguel Tejada leads things off in the seventh inning for Oakland against John Burkett. Tejada, Chavez, and McFarland. A's down by six. Yeah, I think if people in Oakland had been given the opportunity to say, your team is going to be in the pennant race until the last week of the season, I think they would have said that's a pretty good season. I think Oakland has had a very good season. Talk about the job that Art Howe has done with the Oakland A's. Really has changed the face of this team. He and general manager Billy Bean, of course. The A's got a lot younger as the season wore on. Guys like Tony Phillips, Tim Raines were lost to season-ending injuries. They dealt Kenny Rogers prior to the All-Star break to the Mets. Billy Taylor also traded out of the Oakland bullpen. The A's got younger. 
They did not get any less competitive, however. The A's very good after the All-Star break. And you got to look at Art Howe as a serious contender for Manager of the Year in the American League. We talked about Art before the, before the ball game. We talked to Art Howe about who he thought was the uh, Manager of the Year. Jimmy Williams. Really? He said he thinks he's going to get some consideration, but if he had a vote, he'd vote for Jimmy Williams. Well, the, the Red Sox have also done a lot of work to try and piece together what has been a very good season for them. And it started out with all of New England raspberrying Dan Duquette for not retaining Mo Vaughn. Duquette went out and found guys like Brian Daubach and company, and the Red Sox are once again competitive. You couldn't miss with either one of those guys winning that award. That's a fair ball. Miguel Tejada watching it as Pudge Rodriguez throws him out. Talk about a bad break right here. Tejada on a check swing. Watch this. Check swing. Excuse me. Where's the ball? And look at Rodriguez. Look at the catcher. Get the ball in fair territory. Don't give it a chance to go foul. Watch the hitter. Doesn't know where the ball is. But look at the umpire. And once he catches a ball fair territory, it's an easy one, or excuse me, a two to three put out. Good smart play by the catcher. One gone for Eric Chavez. A lot of growing pains this year for Miguel Tejada. He's had a very good season, has shown flashes of brilliance. The A's would like him to be a little more consistent. They think he's going to be there for a number of years. Two balls and a strike to Eric Chavez. One of the young players in this Oakland lineup that has really responded to everyday play under the steady guidance of Art Howe, who has a very good relationship with his players. Art Howe had a number of them go to bat for him prior to the 98 season. He has a good working relationship with his team. You know, anytime a manager has his players speak up for him and, and speak on his behalf, it, you know, it speaks volumes as far as I'm concerned. And, you know, it makes me feel great. You know, I'm just happy to, to be with these guys again this year. And, uh, you know, we've come a long way in a year's time. And hopefully we can continue to improve. No, those are pretty big shoes that he stepped into after Tony La Russa had left Oakland for the 96 season after the great track record he left behind. But Art Howe has done a very good job to get rid of those ghosts and uh, hold up his end of the bargain with the A's. Two balls and no strikes on Mike McFarland. You know, it's funny how you talk about teams taking on the personalities of their managers. Art Howe, a laid-back guy. As a player, he was always battling leg, ankle, knee injuries, and that's the kind of team he's got in Oakland. A lot of laid-back guys that just get up there and get to swing in the bats. Yeah. Art Howe is one of those guys that always had to battle to win himself a spot on the roster. Spent plenty of time in the minor leagues, and he went, even when he got to the big leagues, he never really won himself a job for year after year. He always had to battle. And that's the kind of a guy he is, and that's the way he likes his players to be. Doesn't put a lot of pressure on him. Just come on out and play hard, guys. Guys like John Jaha, Matt Stairs, big mashers who've had trouble keeping the legs healthy over the past couple of seasons. They'll just get out there and hit. Matt Stairs has been around the Red Sox, the Expos, before finally finding a home in Oakland. Here's another guy who's bounced around a little bit. Rich Becker, left-handed hitter, the leadoff batter for the A's, now batting with a man on and two away. Fouled wide at first. One thing about Rafael Palmero, when you put him back on first base, even though he's had the bad knees, obviously he can still play some first. Pretty good with that glove. Good glove man. Palmero, a late substitution at first base for Lee Stevens tonight. Swing and a miss by Rich Becker. 0-2. 
Hayes trying to keep the seventh inning alive for Randy Velarde on deck. Nothing in two to Rich Becker. Pitch from Burkett. Misses in tight. John Burkett, after giving up the three runs in the first, only two of them earned, has really slowed it down tonight. Yeah, they've only gotten two hits since that first inning. They got three runs on three hits in the first, even though two of the runs were earned, one unearned run. So he's only given up two earned runs in this ball game. You know, John himself said in the paper before the start today, I seem to pitch better down the stretch. Now, he struggled a little bit lately, but against Oakland lifetime, he's 5-3 and three with an ERA of 3.69. And compared to his regular season numbers, those are very good numbers because his ERA coming into the game tonight was over six. He's had success against Oakland. John Burkett has pitched out of the seventh inning in only one of his 23 starts this year. He's picking a great time to get his club a good long start tonight, as you mentioned. Becker lifts a fly ball into left. Rusty Greer is under it. And the A's go away without incident in the seventh. Seventh inning stretch down in Arlington. Rangers lead the A's 9-3. A gorgeous night in Arlington, Texas. The hometown Rangers are trying to get to the postseason for the third time in the last four seasons, and veteran right-hander John Perkett has done his part tonight. And Dick Bosman going over and talking to him. Johnny Oates going over and shaking his hand. I tell you what, he got off to a rough start, but he pitched a very strong ball game. Seven innings, five hits, two earned runs, walked four, and struck out four. Good, strong performance. And, of course, the magic number, if they can hold on, will be one. Yvonne Rodriguez will lead things off in the bottom of the seventh inning. Rodriguez, Greer, and Gonzalez looking for more. A number of hitting heroes tonight for Texas, not the least of which Todd Zeal. His seventh career grand slam, his second of the season. Mark McLemore has also contributed. He started it out with a home run in the bottom of the first. Juan Gonzalez has been quiet. Three strikeouts in as many at-bats. Grounded to third, Eric Chavez has got it. Rodriguez is retired to start the bottom of the seventh. I don't know whether Texas is looking ahead and just going up there and trying to make outs, and nobody in baseball goes up and tries to make outs. I think when a team sometimes has a big lead, they're going to go up there and they're going to be aggressive hitters, and they have swung the bats. But Mahay has done an outstanding job in relief in this ball game. 14 up, 14 down by the Oakland left-hander. And here's Rusty Greer now. Greer one for three tonight to keep the average in check at 299. He is trying for his fourth consecutive season with a 300 or better batting average. He's already in elite company with three straight 300 seasons. Only current teammate Yvonne Rodriguez and former Ranger hitman Al Oliver have strung together three straight 300 or better years in addition to Rusty Greer. Al Oliver, that's another guy whose uh, jersey number I'd like to buy here at the ballpark. You don't find any Al Oliver memorabilia around here anymore. That one hit well into the opposite field and gone. Rusty Greer with home run number 20 and Oppo shot. The first run against Ron Mayhay comes on the first hit he allows tonight, and it makes it 10 3 Texas. Yeah, 20 home runs now for Rusty Greer, 97 RBIs, and you would think he's going to get 100 RBIs against a left handed pitcher. Doesn't try to pull the ball, just tries to swing it. Hit the ball hard the opposite way. They are happy in that Texas dugout. One out, one in. Juan Gonzalez, the batter. At 26 in 97 did Rusty Greer. That's his career high.
Gonzalez, as he has much of the night lunging after that pitch. Here are the three strikeout pitches to Gonzalez tonight. The first one, low and away. The second one, once again, low and away. And the third one, they got him a swing at a high pitch. And he's in a hole right now. No balls and two strikes. Could he go for the dreaded four Ks in one game? Don't throw him a strike. You know, that was one of the problems last night with Gonzalez hitting three home runs yesterday. Nothing but strikes thrown to Juan Gonzalez. And as he's shown us tonight, he'll swing at a pitch down and away. Yeah, the key to getting Gonzalez out, get ahead of him. Make him hit your pitch. He's dangerous. I mean, he can hit the pitch a long ways if you have to throw to him. Make him hit your pitch, you got a much better opportunity. Popped it up. McFarland chasing. Yeah, that one's in the seat. What do they call it? You strike out four times a game. What do they call it? The golden sombrero? I think it's uh, the golden sombrero. He's sitting on the hat trick currently, right? With three, <laughs> three strikeouts. Three's the hat trick. Four is the golden sombrero. Or is it the silver sombrero and then the golden... Uh, I think four might be the silver sombrero. And the golden something is five. <laughs> We're not like, making this up, folks. You know, I don't make them up, Pally. It's linen on your third anniversary. Same equation. Final score in the National League, the Atlanta Braves keep putting the pressure on them. New York Mets, a 5-3 win up at Lestat Olympique. And in the NL East, this is current. New York trails the Braves by six. Gonzalez lifts a fly ball into short right. Matt Stairs coming hard, and he makes the catch. Copy editors at the New York Times and the New York Post are having a field day right now. I can see the back page. You know, they have they have the tabloids in New York. I can see the back page today. Oh, no, not again. <laughs> oh, boy. Here's Rafael Palmero now. Mets lose, Braves win. That sounds like a familiar equation over the past week. Again, there are three left head-to-head head -head between these two NL East drivers. Three at Shea, but I'll tell you, with such a big deficit currently, those may not be as significant as they would have been a week ago. No, they're certainly not going to be. Palmero with a comebacker. Mayhay's got it. Rangers tack on one more on Rusty Greer's 20th dinger of the season. Oakland running out of chances tonight. Nineteen ninety nine was a year of pitching magic. David Cohn's perfect game was the highlight of the ninety nine season. But who can forget the mastery of Jose Jimenez when he no hit one of the best hitting teams in all of baseball. And rookie Eric Milton's gem was the capper to the nineteen ninety nine pitching season. You know the biggest shame to that Eric Milton no hitter is that it was not televised by either the Twins or the Angels. That's unusual to see a game that nobody televised. Usually somebody's there to get that tape off the scoreboard camera. Home shot. High home. <laughs> high home no hitter here. Pitching change for the Texas Rangers and the King of All Media Howard Stern in the house. <laughs> Jack of the choke man there to his left. Or is that a winner? Anyway, new pitcher for the Rangers is right hitter Tim Crabtree. Good numbers, one and one. Good ERA, 2.29. Put the walks, winning pitch, good control. First man to face him is Randy Valletti. He offers it the first pitch. Mark Nakamura is second base counterpart. Just in the nose, one down for Crabtree to start it. In the deal with the Toronto Blue Jays in March of 98. Got into 64 games last year for Johnny Oates and an important setup guy for John Wetland this second consecutive season for him with the Rangers. Jason Giambi, the batter now with one away. Tim Crabtree, one of a, a couple of very good major league pitchers. He was actually signed as a catcher. 
spent the first couple of years in the Blue Jays minor league system behind the plate. Pretty tough to imagine because he's 6'4", 220. He looks a lot more comfortable standing upright on the mound than he would uh, crouch behind the plate. I also believe that Troy Percival was another one of those converted players. Dominant closer. He struggled a little bit this year, but obviously pretty good stuff. I would imagine he's going berserk this year, the way that club is playing, because he is very, very emotional. He likes to win, and when that team struggles like that, oof, probably killing him. Well, you're talking about a team in the Anaheim Angels that was supposed to be up there competitively with the Rangers this year. Nobody thought it would be Oakland and Texas atop the division. They thought Anaheim would play a role. They have not. And there's a called strike three to Jason Giambi, who's in the midst of a tough night at the plate. Two quick outs for Tim Crabtree. 0 for 3, two strikeouts in the ball game for Giambi. And I think he was just flat out fooled on this pitch. This is a fastball that catches quite a bit of the plate. 96 mile an hour fastball. Tugan base is empty for John Jaha. He has singled in three trips to the plate tonight. John Jaha went to his first All-Star game this year. He was the lone Oakland representative in Boston this mid-July. Took a hack in the home run hitting contest. One of his former Brewers teammates, Jeremy Burnitz, took that into the final round. 0-2 to Jaha. He wants to go back to Oakland next year. Along with uh, some of the other import players, Kevin Apier, Randy all I, Velarde. All I got to do is pay him. <laughs> Easy, isn't it? You bet. Well, the A's have him at a pretty good bargain rate this year. Those are 34 of the most inexpensive home runs you're ever going to find in Major League Baseball. One and two from Tim Crabtree. I like this pitch from Crabtree. One and two, just to keep him a little alert. Throw that hard 95 mile an hour fastball up and in. Give him something to think about. Nothing wrong with that pitch at all. Oh, he tries to go away. What a surprise. <laughs> Two balls and two strikes, trying to set up Jaha for a punch out. And Crabtree misses why Jaha doesn't offer. Buck Rogers, of course, a big league manager for a long time, had a great philosophy on pitching. In, out, up, down, slow and fast. Just keep the ball in, keep the ball out. Throw the ball up, throw the ball down. And, of course, I think the most important thing you can do as a pitcher, slow and fast. Get the hitter's timing up. Take his timing away, you own him a little more. Two balls and two strikes to John Jaha. Was it, uh, I think it was Eddie Lopat. I think it was Eddie Lopat's quote, never the same speed twice, never the same place twice. Keep him guessing. Full count to Jaha. A drive to right, Jaha with good opposite field power, and this one is gone. Johnny Jaha with a frozen rope line drive home run to the opposite field. Oakland gets one of them back. 10 to 4, Texas. 10 to 4, Texas, but they're down to their last four outs. And don't forget, John Wetland's awaiting in that Texas bullpen. They may have to wake him up, and that's going to be all for the right-hander, Tim Crabtree. They're going to go to the left-hander to get stairs out. And I wonder if Johnny Oates is doing this just to keep his people sharp going into the last week of the season. I think Johnny's pretty comfortable leading 10 to 4. Keep your people sharp, getting ready for the playoffs. John Jaha with a career high in home runs. This is 35th of the season. Passes his old career high, 34 hit in 1996. And Tim Crabtree is gone after two-thirds. A pitching change for the Rangers. They want the left-hander to deal with Matt Stairs. We'll be right back. On here in Texas. There's not been a whole lot of bullpen to love tonight because the Rangers got seven strong from starter John Burkett. But Tim Crabtree done after two-thirds after the home run by John Jaha. And now Johnny Oates wants his second reliever this inning. 
He is left-hander Mike Munoz. And one of the reasons I think that people in Texas love their bullpen because after the sixth inning of a ball game, the Rangers are 67 wins and eight losses thanks to their bullpen. Their bullpen does a great job in the setup department. They got left-handers and right-handers, and then they got a closer out there named Wetland. It is Matt Stairs to face the reliever Mike Munoz with the bases empty. Well, despite the six-run cushion, and I wonder, Oates wants to make the move for the left-hander because they want to set up this guy for the well, night. Wetland might need an innings worth of work tonight. Don't forget, they have another right-hander out there, a pretty good setup man, another Canadian, Jeff Zimmerman. Now, he's struggled a little bit of late, but big numbers, Joe, and he's done a great job for the Texas Rangers. In fact, he did such a good job made the all-star team and how many guys coming out of the bullpen as set up man make the all-star team not many I think you could count that number of people on maybe two hands ball and two strikes on Matt stairs stairs has only eight of his 38 home runs against left-handed hitters Less left-handed pitchers running Let's get another good partner. hit on the ground a third good short hop play by Todd Zeal no further incident after the Jaha solo home run. Rangers try to whittle away at that magic number. They're up by six. The song went away a few years ago. It came back, and I'm not sure which uh, I'm rather more disgusted with, the return of the wave or the return of the YMCA. Shut it down. Close it down. I think this thing is in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, isn't it? No, no, you way. Wouldn't. no way. Come on. This song is a big hit. It's huge. Look at the people love it. Look at them. They're having a great time. I'm up here doing it. Yeah, look at me. Yeah. Okay, baby. Yeah. Foam fingers. That's another thing I wish had gone away. The guy in the mustard shirt didn't quite get the memo. But what did the memo say? He's way over his skis <laughs> sitting in that seat, too. No business, buddy. New pitcher for the A's, timeless wonder, right-hander Doug Jones. Doug Jones, 42 years old, 300 saves in his career, and he can still pitch. Maybe the best changeup anybody uh, in baseball has ever seen. The changeup specialist deals a fastball to Todd Zeal for strike one. You know, the interesting thing on Doug Jones this year is that people are looking for his changeup so much it's made his fastball better. Zeal grounds his second. Randy Velarde takes care of him. 42 years old. Tied for 10th all-time on the save list with 300 saves. 26th on the all-time games pitched list. 788 games. I mean, he's had a great career. Originally selected by the Brewers in the third round of the 1978 June draft. Made his major league debut in Milwaukee in 82. Put himself on the map in Cleveland with some great seasons in the late 80s. Good years in Houston. Had a 27 save season in Philly. Moved on to Baltimore, Chicago, and Milwaukee. Still owns the single-season save record in Brewer franchise history when he closed down 36 games in 1997. He has had a magnificent career. And he's one of the nicest guys you're ever going to want to meet. Two balls and two strikes on Lee Stevens. There had been a pattern for Doug Jones, strictly coincidence when you talk to him about it, of a good year followed by a difficult season for him. He gets Lee Stevens to pop out in short left. There are two away. And if you base that, uh, that formula out through the last couple of years, this should be the good year for him. Doug had a tough season last year between Milwaukee and Cleveland. And you do the math, and he has had a pretty good 1999. He has not had as many save opportunities as in past years. Nothing wrong with having a guy like him coming up and getting you out of trouble earlier in the ball game than a closed situation. Because he knows how to pitch, he throws strikes, and he can still get people out. I don't care what his age is. 
Look at his numbers. His numbers are good enough to continue to pitch. I wonder if they'll take him back next year. Another fastball misses outside to Royce Platon one and one. He used to he used to show you the fastball just to let you know he had it, but he'd always get you out with that slow stuff. Face it for Royce Platon. That one headed towards the gap and it splits Becker and Greaves. That's going to roll a little bit and Royce Platon can run. He's eyeing up third base. Platon in sliding head first with his fifth triple of the season. You know, one thing the Oakland A's do not have a lot of right now is great defense in the outfield. You know, something we haven't talked about a whole lot all night. Grieve in left field, not real good speed. Becker, average center fielder, and of course the right fielder stairs, known more for his offense. Take a look at Clayton here when he hits the ball. Now he knows right now it's a double. But when the ball gets by and rolls to the wall, this is his decision right here. He's taking the extra 90 feet. That's a triple. So he's aboard at third base with two gone. Now for Tom Goodwin, another guy that can run a little bit. That change right there. You know, one of the hardest things for any hitter to do is to wait on the ball. They like those 88, 90 mile an hour fastballs. You throw something up there, 75, 76, or you get them all messed up. Looking for the change, show him the fastball. Looks like a pump, feels like a sneaker. Last licks for the A's, we go to the ninth. Oakland down by six. And the sun seems to be setting on Oakland. 10-4 Rangers as we go to the top of the ninth inning. The executive producers of FX Baseball Saturday Night are Arthur Smith and Bill Borson. Coordinating producer of FX Baseball Saturday Night is Larry Myers. Tonight's game was produced by Jimmy Del Frisco Drake. Directed by Dave Hagan. Head of field operations is Andrea Jenkins. Del Frisco Drake in the truck tonight. Del Frisco has had dinner there last night. The whole crew went. Quite a meal, huh? You bet. Quite a meal. We'd like to thank Larry Myers, our boss. If you're watching, Larry, thank you for dinner. In advance, don't pass out when you see that expense report. We John saw Wetland on to try and close it down here in the ninth inning. If it's any consolation, Larry, we did not order the $2,800 bottle of wine. <laughs> you showed extremely good restraint in that, partner. <laughs> I was shocked that you held back. If I had a two-year contract, I'd have ordered it. <laughs> ben Grieve, Miguel Tejada, and Eric Chavez represent the last chance in this one for Oakland. As John Wetland looks to record the save, John Wetland in the midst of another fine campaign here in Texas. He is far and away the leader in the Rolaids Relief Man of the Decade rankings and will be disclosed at season's end. A couple more years active this decade than Dennis Eckersley and John Wetton is en route to that very distinctive honor. I think one of the reasons we're seeing Wetland in this ball game tonight, the last time he made an appearance was Tuesday. You don't want your closer to go more than two or three days without getting innings worth of work in. Tuesday to Saturday, it's about time for him to get some work in. Pitch to Ben Grieve is fouled away. Two balls and two strikes. Todd Zeal, the man of the hour for the Texas Rangers, came up with that big hit in the bottom of the second inning. The grand slam had made for an eight-run frame. Mark McLemore has also contributed. He with a solo home run. And Rusty Greer added a third bomb for the Rangers tonight. Grieve with a fly ball in Greer's direction. One away. We've got our bases covered as the season winds down. Join us next Saturday for more baseball action right here on FX. Check local listings for the game and time in your area. Those games will be very pertinent to the pennant chases next Saturday. Boy, that's the next to last day of the regular season. And the way things are going in the National League East in particular, it's all going to boil down to next weekend's activity. And I think the National League, for some reason, is going to go right down to that weekend. I think the Mets, Cincinnati, Houston, 
Interesting to see what happens during the week this week, where the Mets can right themselves. If Cincinnati can continue to play well, and perhaps even find themselves catching Houston. Boy, a lot of good things going to happen in baseball this week. One ball and one strike on Miguel Tejada. Johnny Oates lining up the horses for the postseason. To three and one. He slipped a little bit on that last pitch. Let's take a look at this last pitch. I thought he slipped. I hope he didn't hurt himself. Look at that. You can hurt yourself very easily doing that. No one's coming out of the dugout. He's not looking for help. Boy, would that be a blow for Texas. I think that might have just been an impromptu Mitch Williams impersonation out there. Tejada pops it up. That one will fade into the seats. We talked about being in the company of Dennis Eckersley for the Rolaid Relief Man of the Decade Award. John Wetland joins Dennis Eckersley as the only pitcher ever with four 40 save seasons. Talked about Doug Jones and where he ranks on the all-time list. Wetland is 12th with 295. Breathing down Doug Jones back. Full count to Miguel Tejada. High fly ball to short left. Rusty Greer under it. He converts on his second chance this inning. They've counted him out many times before. My bet is that Doug Jones will be back for the year 2000. If he wants to play, you know, I think he's got an opportunity, perhaps in Oakland. You know, I don't think he's one of those guys that's going to want $3 million to play. He probably just enjoys his job. Great guy to have on your club, I think. Eric Chavez represents the last chance for the A's in this one tonight. Again, Oakland at one point led it 3-0 after a three-run top of the first. But the Rangers have charged right back. Three home runs, including a grand slam by Todd Zeal. Art House age, A's on the verge of dropping their second straight here in Texas. Bear in mind, these two teams had split ten games coming into tonight's. Chavez with a drive into the opposite field. Greer twisting around. Rusty Greer makes all three putouts in the top of the ninth as John Wetland hammers down the win for the Rangers. Real hard holding back the smiles if you're a Texas Ranger. And are out to their third American League Western Division championship in the last four seasons. 10-4 Texas the final tonight and the Ranger bats were just too much early. No, well, last night it was all Texas Rangers, I believe they scored 11 runs last night, 10 tonight, and I think even though Oakland can score a lot of runs, I think Texas a better offensive club, and the pitching staff for the Oakland A's just could not get the job done the last two nights, and this is a series they needed to win all three games to get back in the hunt. They have started off losing the first two. They're closer to Boston than they are to Texas, and they're running out of time. <laughs> 